any concerns that it wasn't going to be as fast as say the Vaporfly or Alphafly um, were sort of written off. So in today's video, I'm going to be talking all things Nike Streakfly. Um, this is the latest uh, road racing shoe designed by Nike for the 5 and 10Ks. Um, it's a sort of cross between two shoes that Nike have brought out in the past. So the Streak um, LT range as well, I believe, and the Vaporfly. It's sort of a mashup between the two shoes. The Streak was a much lower to the ground, sort of traditional racing flat. And the Vaporfly, which I have here, is the sort of super shoe of choice for the sort of 5K, 10K, half marathon, all the way up to the marathon. I've also got the Alpha Fly here and the Dragonfly. It's a bit dirty um, from my cross country races this season, but yeah, this shoe sort of has a bit of everything in terms of um, Nike's shoes that they've brought out in the last few months. Um, to years. So far in the shoe I've used it for a 10k road race and a track session. Um, I also did a 4k easy run after the 10k race. I'm going to share a little bit about how the race went in this shoe. Um, but in today's video I'm going to go over my first impressions, um, my likes and dislikes and how I'm going to use this shoe moving forward. But before I do that I'm just going to go into some of the specifications. So this shoe um, I went half size down in, so for me, seven and a half. I usually wear a size eight in the UK. Um, I just saw a, a initial review that said they come up a little bit long, so I decided to go half size down. It's a bit of a gamble, but I think it paid off. Um, I prefer a much snugger fit um, in the toe box area of my shoes, so my toes come right to the end of this one um, and in half a size down. But if you prefer maybe a little bit more room in the toe box, so if your feet um, swell, then you might want to go true to size. This shoe has a six millimeter drop from heel to forefoot. So a bit lower to the ground than the Vaporfly. It has 32 in the heel, um, dropping down to a 26 millimeter in the forefoot. Um, and six mil is around the sort of sweet spot for me. That's where I like to, um, that's the sort of drop I think I perform best at, especially for the race, um, racing shoes. Just for comparison, I think the, um, Alpha Fly has a 4mm drop and the Vaporfly has an 8mm, so it's right in between um, the two. So this shoe has a full Zoomex midsole um, and it actually has a Pebax shank which is sort of in this section, so towards the heel, uh, midfoot of the shoe. Um, no carbon plate um, in this one. And I will say the Zoom X does feel a little bit softer than the Vaporfly. I'm not sure if it's just because the Vaporfly has that full length carbon plate. So it's a lot more rigid than say this new uh, Streakfly, which is, as you can see in, in the toe box here, it's very, very flexible, but that um, Peback shank in the midfoot gives it a little bit of rigidity um, in, in that midfoot area, which I think is was needed, especially when you sort of transition through the through the foot strike. If, if if there wasn't any sort of structure in there, I think this would be very very flexible and yeah, too flexible basically. So yeah, nice to have that pebback shank in there. Um, gives the shoe a little bit of rigidity, but overall much um, softer and more flexible than the other road racing shoes from Nike. Moving on to the outsole, we've got more of a sort of ridged design. You've got a harder rubber here in the toe box, which we've seen on a lot of the other road racing shoes from Nike, such as the Alphafly, Vaporfly. Um, I'm going to show you the Alphafly in just a second because I feel like this design is quite similar. Um, moving on to the sort of heel and midfoot of the shoe, we've got exposed um, Zoom X here, which could be um, an area of con for concern, which I'll talk about a little bit later. And then we've got slightly harder rubber section on the heel here, just to prevent some of that wear. Um, if we have a look at the Alpha Fly, um, it's got a very similar sort of ridged design that this shoe has, um, and it, it has sort of an Alpha Fly feel to the landing in terms of the traction. But yeah, nice to have a bit of um, harder rubber on the front um, to yeah, for that durability, but also have that exposed zoom X, so it has, so it's going to be nice and nice and nippy, but also keep it nice and lightweight. And finally, in terms of specifications, is the upper. Um, it's a very breathable, lightweight upper. Um, it's a, I would say, it's a cross between the Vaporfly. Um, this is the original Vaporfly and the Dragonfly. It sort of has a track um, spike feel to the upper as well. Um, 
very breathable, yeah, lightweight, and you can tell that Nike have really focused on making sure this, this shoe is as lightweight as possible. A little bit of a heel counter, um, nice bit of structure there. Not too much, but enough I feel like you're gonna get enough structure. And again, it's got that same sort of lockdown in the heel area that the, um, the Alpha Fly and the Vaporfly both have. Um, so yeah, a very good uh, lockdown from the upper. Final point to make in terms of the specifications, this comes in at 135 pounds um, in the UK, which I think is pretty damn reasonable considering the new um, Adidas Takumi Sen, which is also a 5K super shoe, um, came in at 180 pounds. Um, the Vapor Flies, you can pay anything between 200 to 260 pounds. Um, and the Alpha Flies, this shoe, I believe, came in at £280, so £135 for this, I feel, is very good value for money. So moving on to my first impressions of putting this shoe on my foot, and um, yeah, first thing I noticed is it's insanely light um, compared to any other shoe that I've put on, really. The only shoe that is, is lighter that I have in my sort of rotation is the Dragonfly, which is a track spike. Um, so this is almost like a track spike for the road. Very, very lightweight. Another first impression was it, it was very soft compared to um, the other road racing shoes that I'm used to wearing. Um, you can just feel it sort of gives a lot more when you, when you step in it. Um, and yeah, just a lot softer overall. So it made me think, is the Zoom X slightly different, um, but I do think it is just because it doesn't have the full length carbon plate, which yeah offers a lot of rigidity in the other shoes. Other first impressions were it's very easy to get a good lockdown in this shoe. Um, it has a very sort of um, well-designed upper. I quickly got a really good lockdown in this shoe. Um, I didn't have to adjust it, which is pretty good for a shoe when you get it first out of the box. And my final first impressions was it screams fast. Um, as soon as I put this on, I felt that I could run fast in this shoe, um, so it was a real confidence boost. So I decided actually not to re not to run in it before the 10k race at the weekend. Um, so yeah, the first kilometer in this shoe was in that 10k race, and yeah, it felt amazing. I had a lot of confidence that I could run fast in this shoe. So moving on to my likes and dislikes, and then finally I'm going to go over how I'm going to use this shoe uh, moving forward and who is it best suited for. So my first like was the performance of this shoe. I ran a 32.01 10K, which for me was a 53 second PB. Um, so any concerns that it wasn't gonna be as fast as say the Vaporfly or Alphafly um, were sort of written off. For me, it is definitely as fast, if not a little bit faster than the other racing shoes from Nike. So that was good to know. The other thing I really like about this shoe is the design. It seems like it's, very, very simple. Everything's been stripped back to make it as lightweight and as fast as possible, um, which is exactly what you want for a road racing shoe, especially for those shorter distances. My third like for this shoe was the price point, £135, um, which I already said I think is a great price for this shoe, um, especially one that's going to be able to rival the super shoes um, that also have those super high price points. Um, so I think it's going to be a definite um, sort of almost budget alternative in comparison to the other super shoes that are on the market. And my final like for this shoe was the traction and stability that I had when I was cornering. So in the 10K road race, there was a few corners, it was wet on the day, um, and this outsole design was exceptional. Um, the way the, the ridges sort of go all the way to the back of the foot, no matter where you landed on the corner, I felt like I had a good amount of grip. Um, so yeah, that was a definite highlight for this shoe. Now moving on to my dislikes, um, it's no secret by this point you're probably uh, quite aware that I'm a big fan of this shoe, so it was quite hard to find the dislikes, um, but I have got a few. The first one is the durability of this outsole. I've worn this for a track session as well, and as you can see it's gone a, um, a bit of a red colour, that's the colour of our track. Um, here in Chelmsford, and this outsole here, especially this exposed Zoom X, has already started to wear quite a lot, um, and I've only ran about 20 kilometers in this shoe in total. Um, so that is a little bit of a concern for me, um, but then again, it is a road racing shoe, very, very lightweight, so durability is never gonna be super high. The second thing I picked as a sort of dislike was the scrunching I had when I put it on, um, in terms of the lockdown in the toe box here. It's quite a rigid upper, um, it does move nicely and fit, and I did have a good lockdown, but I just felt when I was putting the, 
putting the shoe on, I was getting a little bit of scrunching around the, the bottom point of the lacing system. Um, and they were the only sort of dislikes I could come up with. So I'll quickly do a little bit of a race recap from Saturday. Um, the first 5k was in 16.27 um, and the second 5k was in 15.24. So yeah, almost a, oh, over a minute difference between the first half of the race and the second half of the race, which sort of reflected the conditions on the day. It was very, very windy on the way out. Um, and there was three of us in the lead pack, which was nice. It was nice to be able to push on with um, a few guys of similar abilities. Um, we were actually together for the majority of the race. I think it was only until uh, 9K that the, a few gaps started to appear. Um, and I actually uh, won the race with a 400 meter sort of kick. It came all the way down to a sprint finish. Um, and yeah, these shoes performed great, especially when I was trying to get a real fast high turnover. Towards that end of the race, I felt very confident in these shoes that they would perform well. Finally, on to my uses and who is this shoe best suited for? So for me, I'm gonna use this for 5K and 10K road races in the future. Um, yeah, just got some really good uh, feedback from the shoe on the day and I think it can definitely um, rival the Vaporfly and it's definitely faster over the 5K and 10K than the Alphafly in my opinion. Um, I'm going to be using it for some track sessions despite the, the durability issues. This shoe just felt amazing. Um, on my track session last night I did a sort of cut down workout so the longest rep was two kilometers and we finished the session with 200 meter repeats. Um, I think I ran a 28 second 200 meters in this shoe um, it feels almost like a track spike at those faster speeds because that traction is just so good. Um, I'm not going to do any easy runs in this shoe. I actually did a four kilometer easy run at the end of the 10k. I just couldn't be bothered to change the shoes. Um, but yeah, I think I just want to save this shoe for the races. You could do easy runs in it, but for me personally, that durability being a little bit of an issue, I want to save this for race days and I feel like it's a shoe that's going to be at its best pretty much straight out of the box and for the first maybe 50 to 100 kilometers after that it's going to start to deteriorate in terms of performance so I'm going to save it for those um, races but yeah that's pretty much it for today's video in terms of the Nike Streak Fly I'm really excited to use it in my training over the next few months it's definitely going to fit nicely into my rotation um, this Saturday Sunday sorry I'm going to be down in London with let's do this this is the t-shirt I'm wearing it. it says let's do this on the back um, for the winter um, 10k my wave starts at 9 30 so if anyone's down there happens to be down there in London watching that race again if you can get any footage filmed landscape that would be great I'm um, really excited to give that one a go I think it's more of a fun fun run but maybe there'll be some quick runners down there as well um, but yeah looking forward to that one nonetheless but yeah until next time aspire to run run to inspire and we'll see you very soon bye bye